President Trump and his campaign have pretty much stayed disciplined, mostly letting Democrats implode on their own and not getting in the way. Joining me now to talk about it is Ned Ryan. He's founder and CEO of American Majority and Doug Collins, former Georgia congressman and host of the Doug Collins podcast. Gentlemen, good to see you. Ned, the debate was a primary example of this, how how yep. uh, Trump himself displayed an enormous amount of discipline just by sit, you know, standing back, listening yep. to, to Donald Trump, or listening to Joe Biden wrap himself into pretzels, trying to say things that in the end made no sense at all. Do you think he can continue to do that, kind of lay back and let the Democrats continue to stew in their own pot of trouble? Well, I think it's a pretty positive sign what we're seeing right now. Of course, it's uh, I think Trump's taken the, the view that it's very bad manners to interrupt your opponent while he's self-destructing. <laughs> but I think the tone for this was really set, David, in March of 2021. And I, the reason I say that is that's when Donald Trump brought back Susie Wiles. And I think you see Susie Wiles' fingerprints on this extreme discipline that's being shown by the Trump campaign across all fronts. And, and I think that has been because Trump trusts Susie because he knows that she, she has his best interests in mind. And I think there's been a real trust relationship that's developed. And Susie has a very quiet, disciplined approach to how the campaign is being managed. And I think Trump has seen that and realized, Susie's got my best interests in mind. And I think that's what you're seeing play out right now. And I think it's an extremely yeah. positive sign. But I will say this, David, it's July. You do not win presidential campaigns in July. You win right, them in November, right, and there's right. a lot of work that still has to be done to do that. But, Doug, the, it was such a seminal event, that, that debate last week, and, and there, there have been a number of, of polls done after the debate itself. The big three, by the way, the, the three biggest, uh, three of the biggest media companies around, CNN, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, all of them agree that Trump is now leading by six points. That's way out of the uh, the margin of error there. So d how long do you think that lasts? Is, is, there, is there a chance that Biden, if Biden is the candidate in, in November, is there a chance that those figures might stay the same or change, and how? Well, well I think there's a couple of things here. I, I agree with Ned, though. If, if I was a Trump voter right now, I'd consider it a dead heat and get out everybody you can to go vote. This is yes. nowhere close to being over, and I've heard too many Republicans get real happy uh, since the debate. But yes. really, the thing for Biden's problem was not necessarily the debate. The Biden problem that I think is exasperating this is how he's handled it post-debate, not contacting the Democrats on the Hill, not dealing with Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, which is fine with me. Keep keep messing this up. Again, just as was said, when somebody's com uh, contemplating political suicide, you, let the, you don't have to push them. And the discipline of the campaign <laughs> is the thing that's going to win now. People see the difference. They can see it very clearly from what happened on Thursday night. And Donald Trump just has to say, look, I had four years. You were better off. You see this happening right now. Yeah. We are worse off. And then be prepared in case something does happen to Biden. Yeah. But right now, I yeah. think it will hold. But I want every uh, conservative, every Trump voter to get out there and, and do like the campaign's doing. Be disciplined. Knock on doors. Tell people about the vote. Get them yes. out to vote. Because that's the only thing that will win in November. Well, Ned, what happens if it's Kamala? What happens if, if, if Biden does step down and, and Kamala steps up to the plate? What, how, how would you go after her? Well, I think she's a weaker candidate than Biden. I saw a quote from, from a Democrat, Democrat mega donor the other day in which he said a comatose Biden is better than Kamala Harris. So I think there's still a lot of question marks as to whether she'll be the nominee. But I, I would just add, David, I mean, the polls look great. We're still four months out. This is going to come down to six or seven states. And, and we've been talking about Biden being in Wisconsin. They brought back ballot boxes today, the Wisconsin State Supreme Court. I think this is not going to come down to whether the quality of the candidate's great, whether it's a comatose Biden or Kamala Harris. It's going to come down, can you collect more ballots than the Biden mm -hmm. campaign? And, and I certainly hope the Trump campaign and the RNC and others are really focused on the six or seven states like Wisconsin that are going to decide the White House. Take this momentum and get people doing the right thing, requesting absentee ballots, and then chase those ballots home to no less than 80 percent, hopefully 85 percent. Well, quickly, Ned, do you, do you have any reason to suspect that, that Trump, the Trump team is not up to it, that, that they may not be doing that kind of due diligence in those key races? 
the, the thing that gives me hope is that Susie Wiles comes out of Florida, and the Florida yeah. GOP has committed deeply to AB Generation and Chase, so I know that they have the right mindset. The question is, do they have the right funding, focus in the right places okay. to accomplish everything that they need to? Doug, finally, uh, there's, there's a big event happening in, in August, and that's the Democratic Convention in Chicago. And we remember, everybody remembers 1968. If you don't remember it yourself, you've, you've read about it. Uh, you look at what happened last night on July 4th when, when American flags were being burned in the street all over America. Uh, New York had a number of these, these protests. I call them riots because they were riots. People were attacked. One guy wearing an American flag was attacked. Uh, they were all pro-Hamas demonstrators. If that happens in a big way in Chicago during the convention, is it all over for Democrats? Yeah, it could be because it shows that they're not bringing in that vote that they need in places like Michigan in particular and other places. It, <laughs> yeah. it says that there's a true ideological break with that far, far, you know, radical uh, left that you see here. And even Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, they're not going to bring that back um, because it, that's the problem that they've had. You know, if people have problems with Trump, it's typically about his style or other things, but they do like his policies. They'll vote for the policies. On the other side, though, Biden and them and these, these protests are showing it in a, in a rehash of 68 in Chicago will be detrimental to them because it shows that they are, do not like uh, what the Biden administration, they feel like were promised to them and then went back on it. So, yeah, they got a real problem yeah. there. And it, it, what it does is it connects the chaos that this administration, yes. they're always yep. talking about Donald Trump and chaos. What is what do we have at the border but chaos? What do we have on our city streets but chaos? What do exactly. we have in Europe and, and the Far East but chaos? It brings that chaos together, these, these, these riots that we see in the streets like nothing else does. Gentlemen, we've got to leave it at that. Great to see you both. Ned Ryan, Doug Collins. Friday after July 4th is a difficult day to, to have a date like this. I appreciate you making it. Thank you, gentlemen.